Hello, welcome. Let's see what we've prepared in the new MPS release. First, let's have a look at what's new in the editor. You can now adjust the weight of the font. Small, but I think it's handy. Second, you can zoom in and zoom out in the editor. There's an option in configuration where you can set it on and off. And then when you are in the editor, you can actually hold the control or command key and scroll with the mouse wheel and the editor will zoom in or zoom out. This might be in particular handy to some notations like tables or perhaps diagrams. A lot new cool stuff has been added in the version control subsystem of MPS. For example, when looking at the merge commit in the log history, you see in the right hand side panel the differences between the merge commit and the uh, the parent commits from which the merge was done. And then obviously you can see the differences between the the result of the merge and either of the two parent commits. Well, another option is to actually see all three versions of the code. In the center you see the result of the merge, on the left hand side and on the right hand side you see the code from the respective two branches that were merged. And you see the differences between them, you can see nodes that have been moved around. And in fact, in situations like that, when you have nodes that have been moved around, you can disable synchronous scrolling to adjust the position of the panels uh, more easily if needed. So that's also a very handy feature of this dialog. The ability to annotate code has been improved and made more reliable. Now let me show how it works. On the left, you see the commits that has some impact on the node that you're looking at. We can actually enable a hint pop-up to show um, some more details about the, the commit that you point your mouse at. Uh, if you click on any of these uh, commits, you will instantly see the diff for that particular commit. You can customize how the left panel looks. Now you can specify what information it should give you, what colors it should use, and also you know how to specify names of the people who made the, the, the commit. You can copy the revision number into the clipboard or you can show the particular commit that you click on you can show it in the in the git log. This is not the end of the new cool features. You can also have the editor highlight the cells that actually were modified during the particular commit. Now, as you move your mouse around the uh, left-hand side panel, the cells that were changed in that particular commit get highlighted in the editor. Alternatively, you can have all the cells colored with the color of the commit when they were changed the last time. Now, however, you can right-click on any of the cells in the editor, and in the context menu, you'll see options similar to the ones you would see in the left annotations panel. There's a little time machine embedded in the annotations feature. You can choose any revision in the left hand side panel and have it annotated or the version that preceded it can be annotated. Granted it takes a while to calculate but then you see how the particular node looked like at that particular time in history. And that is cool, isn't it? The generation plan language received another dose of improvements. Now when you specify a transformation that should happen as part of a generation plan, you have the option to specify a language 
with three additional options transform target and extend transform is the usual option to generate a specified language which means to run its generator the target option means to run all generators for languages that manifest the specified language as the target language. So this way you don't have to list all the languages that actually generate into a particular language. You just indicate that all such languages should be generated. Similarly, the extend option runs all generators for languages that declare that uh, they extend the language you specified in your generation plan. The purpose of this is obviously to make it easier to create generation plan and to detach the generation plan from the actual language structure. Now here's a little handy improvement to the generator language. Now inside a loop macro you can now refer back to the node for which the loop was triggered. So here inside a template when specifying a property macro now I can uh, first I can get the index of the iteration through the collection in the loop macro. Well and in this property macro well I can just get hold of the node uh, which means in this case the state chart that wraps the, the, the loop. The JetBrains MPS Lang text language received an upgrade as well and you know changes to that language are propagated into base language comments so this is probably the place where you meet these changes uh, most likely. So now selection works the way you would expect from a textual editor. You just hold the shift key and then using the arrow keys you can go left and right to increase selection in both directions or you can just do, uh, go shift up and down to select um, text by lines in bigger chunks. Or you can do control A to select all to select the whole multi-line comment. Once you have some piece of text selected, you can apply style changes. Uh, Ctrl U will underline it. Ctrl B make it bold. Ctrl I itali italics. However, this doesn't work in comments because the style is overridden by the comment style here. But wherever text is used other than base language comments, you'll get the possibility to change bold and italic style. Now the, the style is sticky, so if you continue typing uh, the style will be applied to all the subsequent words until you change that. Now bullet points are enabled so you can just type bullet points uh, they will be transformed into bullet points and then behave as you would expect from bullet points so that you can go to the front of the line press tab or shift tab and the indentation is increased or decreased. If you press tab somewhere else it will just insert the tab key into the text. Similarly you can work with numbered lists but then instead of uh, using you know some bullet symbol you use a number with a dot followed by space and that's recognized as a numbered point and treated as such. So you can specify a couple of number points and then you can again go to the front of that numbered point and press tab or shift tab to increase decrease indentation which has impact on numbering obviously. All the clipboard operations have been corrected as well so you can just copy or cut any piece of text and paste it to some other place where text is expected 
Um, for example, you can copy paste between multi-line and single line comments in base language, or you can select a piece of any any model, any node, copy it to the clipboard, paste it into a comment, and it will be wrapped in some container as a piece of code, as a node inside that text, and you can manipulate it as you can manipulate it as an entity. It preserves its original tree. Um, the original, its original structure. It preserves its original structure. Also, feel free to copy code from outside of MPS, grab some text, paste it into where text is expected in your model, and the code will be pasted in. Now, since multi-line comments are relatively new in base language, here are two tips you might find useful if you're using single line comments heavily to accommodate for the lack of multi-line comments in earlier version of MPS. Uh, first, you can, using an intention, you can convert a single line comment into a multi-line comment and then start adding multiple lines. Or, if you already have multiple single line comments following one another, that's a handy intention that will just merge them into a single multi-line comment. The method signature refactoring is now much more clever than it used to be. Uh, you trigger that refactoring typically from the context menu and it will pop up a little dialog where you see the current signature of the method and you can modify it. <clears throat> you can rename the parameters, you can delete parameters or you can add them. So if you delete a parameter like I just did here now the refactoring gives you some little preview uh, what, what will happen and then you see the result. Notice the deleted parameter was actually converted in a local variable so that the code inside the method is not broken. Now when adding parameters well, you specify the type and the name and then you might specify a default value. You know, some defaults are pre-created for you, but you might actually customize them if you want to. You can also specify an arbitrary expression as the default value. These default values will be provided as extra parameter values in places where you call the method that is being refactored. A similar algorithm is used to actually make uh, method calls and method declarations in Sing. Well, to start with, you can create a method declaration from a mere method call that current that initially is unresolved, but thanks to you know a quick fix, it can be turned into a method declaration. And once you have a method declaration and you have and you have places where you call that method, you can start modifying the method call by adding parameters to it. And then you've got quick fixes that allow you to either introduce a new method that matches the parameters or modify the existing method so that its signature matches the parameters you pass in. And you can change types of uh, those parameters uh, add additional parameters, delete parameters, and the algorithm is clever enough to find the algorithm is clever enough to minimalize the changes to the method declaration signature when you add or delete or change a type of a parameter. Okay, that's for the highlights of this release. You can find more new features listed in the What's New document. And, you know, best of all, try it for yourself. Have fun. Goodbye.